Swing low, sweet chariot, coming far to carry me. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming far to carry me home. My name is Aidan Berry, a brother of Mike's, his younger brother. And Mike and I grew up together here. This is our house here, just to my left, in Middle Street. In actual fact, it's in the junction of Middle Street and Cross Street. Uh, we're just after coming down from the Augustinian Church, where we had the month's mind mass for Mike. He's just over a month today. Mike and I were very close but we didn't always see eye to eye, but yet Mike was a very special person. Since his death, believe it or not, I've learned an awful lot about Mike and the number of people who liked him and had something to do with, you know, and who, who uh, t t t is quite amazing. But Mike and I, as I say, because of our age uh, as being close, there was a year and a half between us, uh, we spent some time in London together uh, and Mike of course got involved in the rugby as we saw Pucks. But Mike, everybody, I've met so many people since, particularly younger women, women kind of between you know, the age of 30, 40 and some older, have come up to me and said, oh they knew Mike so well and he was so helpful to them and so nice. And that was genuine. Uh, it'll take me a lot to try and uh, emulate him or be anything like him. But I did like Mike, I loved him. But I have to say, at times we had our disagreements, but Mike was much, much loved by so many people. His funeral was a, a, a thing to behold. It was fantastic, the number of people who attended. Obviously he was a rugby player, loved it. He played here, he played in England and he played for Ealing and loved dealing and loved everything to do with it. But he also uh, joined Corinthians here then and played with them right into his, I think in his 40s or so. And what I've found is his friends, his many, many friends who played on those teams with Mike, they I had idealized him from Jerry Ward to a whole heap of them there. I met them at Madge's funeral and there was just something that they had for Mike, that there was only one Mike, he was the, their leader there. But he was a, a stubborn man, but a man of principles. And I saw Mike when he was involved in London in the trade union movement, and to much deprivation for himself, with no wages for a long time, 
stood by firmly with his trade union when they were on strike for better pay for building workers. And that went on, I don't know how long, it was several months, and Mike stuck with it. Yes, he was uh, a man who didn't complain. I remember one time Mike being in pain, he had, his leg was bad, and when eventually he did go to a GP or to uh, the hospital to get some treatment, they were quite astonished that a man, his leg was so bad that uh, how he hadn't presented himself before this. But as I say, just talking to you now, it's difficult to, to express. It's hard to believe Mike is dead. I know we had his month's mind that he had a fantastic reception and just here in Middle Street where we're sitting, just down as far as here from the Augustinian, the Corinthian boys marched down and sang and carried his coffin. And that was lovely. As I said in the church, one thing I said that was so real and so true was, it was a privilege to be with all of the people who came there to pay their respects to Mike. He's down in Fort Hill now with his family members. He loved Fort Hill. Jokously, I said, you want to, just I think he owned Fort Hill, Mike. And uh, he didn't take too kindly to that, but I think he really knew where I was coming from. Thank you. Yeah, um, my, name, my name is, uh, well, my mother called me Kieran, uh, and along the way that was dropped, and I'm uh, for many years uh, better known as Flesh for all the right uh, reasons. Not to, do, right not to do with long coats or anything, all about quick feet. <laughs> um, I like it. And yourself? I'm James O'Day, and I came from Abigail Street, and I'd be a, a neighbour of Mike's, and I was a great friend of Frankie's brother. And my wife was uh, Mary, Mary Turlet uh, from uh, Magdalene Turris, uh, Mary, Mary Turlet, and yeah. she was a great friend of Mary Burry's, Mick's sister. And we have a great, we have a great rapport, great friendship with the family. And uh, I first met Mike uh, really in the rugby field. And Corinthians. we had great Corinthians and we had a great session, we had a great uh, career together. He played in every position on the pitch, except second row because he was a bit small for that. But he was some tiger on the pitch. Yeah. And he, his catchphrase was building us up in the dressing room as uh, I want animal. And yeah. uh, he was some character and uh, I loved him. Oh, yeah. um, Flash, when did you first encounter I, I also encountered Mick Berry on the rugby field, probably for the first time, but I was in opposition. Uh, I played with uh, a junior club or ladies' boys club. With Mas uh, with, uh, I like to call him Mick or Burzo, played with uh, Corinthians. Um, then, uh, shortly after that, I moved to Corinthians and uh, actually built a nice relationship with him. And he was actually at my wedding in um, in um, Wexford in Rostow Strand, and uh, I remember during the course of that wedding introducing to some people, and they all thought he was my friend from Madrid, with his uh, complexion and, and uh, many, many other things. But uh, but I also remember Mike loved the bargain, and. The best bargain I ever liked was a cheap pint. <laughs> and uh, while we were in the, the night before the wedding, we were in the hotel, um, and I was obviously quite nervous, as you can imagine, and hoping that all these guys about Duncan from Galway were going to behave themselves, and uh, we weren't going to be evicted, and we could last one night down there anyway. Yeah. But uh, someone came in and uh, announced that there was a bear across the road called the Railway Men's Bear, and uh, the pint was five pence cheaper. So. The announcement was early made and Mike was gone. And he, he brought one or two with him. But, uh, so he wasn't the flash? Well, he was a flash that night and a different him. But just as he, I saw him disappeared out the door, the manager of the hotel appeared. And he announced, because it was the first wedding in the hotel, the bear was free for the next hour. So Mike returned some hours later, and you can imagine. Uh, and he was told about the free bear 
So from that, he never, ever, ever forgot it. And many years later, when I'd bump into him, he'd say, you owe me, you owe me. And he was obviously referring to that. Uh, but in that, I'm skipping a bit now, but he, he did become uh, a great, like he did to Manny, a great friend. And I suppose everyone just got as a, and a great character. And another thing that stands out in my mind, the first game I did play with him were Corinthians. Uh, as James said here, he played in every position on the pitch. But in his later stages, it was very confined to the forwards. And he didn't have the greatest respect for guys who play on the wing. He didn't think they were manly enough or kind of, and the backs. So I remember my first day with Corinthians, there was a mall inching his way down on the touchline. Yeah. And all I could hear coming out of the mall was, don't give it to them, don't give it to them. And my centre beside me said, you know, he's not talking about the opposition. Uh, he obviously uh, hadn't the greatest of trust. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but uh, what can I say? He, 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 he was a legend in Galway, a great friend to many people, and uh, fondly known as Burzo. Uh, I'm, again, I'm jumping because you're asking me these things, I didn't come in my head. Yeah. And I'm going back to the early days again when he invited me down to the house at the boat, half 12 after Manning Pine supporter yeah. for something to eat. And I was a little bit concerned because I knew Cookin wouldn't be his, uh, one of his greatest. He's 14, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we arrived now in the big pan went on. It was a huge pan. Uh, I, I, Never, I never seen a pan as big as in my life. Anyway, that went on the stove, and he said to me, "Do you like fish?" And uh, as it happens, I, I adore every kind of fish. So he proceeded to throw this on the plate, and while I, and he said, "There's no bones in that fish." No, he said. And I was, I was eating. And I was I was eating fried potato, and Burzo, Burzo swore in his life it was the best of place. So, but that sums Burzo up. It sums him up, yeah. Right, yeah. But, uh, we we we'll never forget him. He was a great Corinthian and a, a great person. And I think everyone, everyone will miss him. We, we, we remember him fondly. Is there anything else you'd like to say? There's one note that the, you might be able to record like that. It's still good. It was an, an occasion. You can record this note if you want. Yeah. Can just please us. No, 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 please. Like, is it, yeah. Yeah, there was an occasion where it was a New Year's Day and we were playing a friendly match down in Ballon Road. And uh, it was out by the race course. Yeah. And uh, Burzo was the hooper and I was the prop. And it wasn't supposed to be, it wasn't a competition match, but we had to fulfill the occasion. So we were down there anyway, and um, we had to pick up, we were short one person. Uh, and we picked up uh, a bear man from Murphy's and he had no gear, he was a stocky fella yeah. and uh, we got boots and stockings and tags and everything for him and sure he couldn't run for nuts so uh, we put him on the wing yeah. and anyway the game progressed anyway and uh, we were down in the scrum and all of a sudden Burzo got in the scrum and the scrum broke up and everybody looked back and Burza says I don't see any carrots that's him Burza was unique and he, he developed uh, a third team in the club he, and uh, they're now when all is known as Burza's babes and uh, he recorded the details of these birds or babes in a small little notebook, about the size of a cigarette packet. And he had their, it would have appeared he had their uh, PPS numbers, their mother's maiden's name, um, everything you could think of. And But the, the key thing to make the team is your ability to buy your own. That was a key <laughs> thing, you know, and, and, and obviously to pay for it. But, and that was a, a wonderful, unique thing. And uh, and the funny thing about it, they were very successful in the in the uh, 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 as regards winning silverware. Uh, 
Uh, they were a very successful side, and uh, Perzo just had all this. I wouldn't even call it a file of facts. I don't know what they call it. It was a, it was a, a it was a battered notebook. They had all the information. Uh, 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 the, the FBI wouldn't be able to uh, figure out what was what was in it. It was coders and. You know, it was just amazing, amazing thing. And, and that, that says a lot about it. But the, one other thing about birds though, and you know about people with principle, and you think they're very, uh, you know, un birdzo like But Burzo showed his principle by, in in the 70s and the 80s, when they were training in Corinthians, and probably most of them, you, you did laps. You didn't go into the gym and physios and your physio came over with a tube, it was called wintergreen. And you ran laps, that was the thing. And you ran and on a cold, dirty winter's night, you're out in front of the corner, you're running through. And Burzo, when I talk about principle, Burzo would do the five laps or six laps and he would do it in a way you were told to stay outside the flag. And Burzo would always stay outside the flag, even if he was back in the back. And you, as a young guy that was well able to run, but was feeling the bit, and in the darkness up in the corner, you actually cheeses, and, and you'd hear this roar from behind the periphery, the periphery. And I know what the periphery was, I could never spell it, but I knew what it was. <laughs> but Burzo knew what it was. And Burzo would saunter in 20 minutes after you and say, Do it again, you didn't know the periphery. And uh, he did the periphery. And that was his. That was he his. Had a code. Yeah, and that showed his, his principle. He yeah. he would not even in in the pitch dark when no one could see him, he'd stay outside the flag. Stick oh, the flag. Well, yeah. No, I have one more story. No, I think it was when when he was the coach called Mike Hanley, yeah. and uh, Mike was just after retiring from senior rugby, and. Uh, at half time in at one, at one match he said he talked to Mick and he says uh, we have to get rid of number 12 and Mick says well he said tell me who he is and I'll get rid of him it's you Mike one other thing can yeah. I say one other thing about this course, coach just, just at, at Jim, I remember that coach as well yeah. and uh, um, Mick himself was playing and um, at some stage of the game, uh, Mick or uh, Mike Connolly, the coach, shouted out and said, uh, Burzo, warm up, warm up, you're coming off. <laughs> <laughs> I first met Mike about 1970, 72. Yeah. And it was at Corinthians Rugby Club I met him in Ordner Craig. Corinthians? Corinthians. And I believe he worked at a time for Post and Telegraphs. I discovered only lately. And he left uh, Post and Telegraphs and he went to London. And he became a member of a, a London club called Eileen, I think it was Eileen Shamrocks or Eileen something like that. Yeah. He, he came. And I think he stayed, he might have been five or six years in England, I can't just remember. But I didn't meet him again until the late 70s, I'd say. Yeah. I met him in the club then again. And I'll always remember, well, first of all, you wouldn't expect that kind of a gentleman to be in the club. He was so religious, I felt he was. Oh, yeah. You know, and good, not, not religious, a good man. Good man, yeah. And then I, Gone for a few years out of Galway. Well, I wasn't. In, I was quietly involved with Donny White in the club, but I would say I wasn't a member because I was away from home. Yeah, yeah. But back in the 80s, late 80s again, I was fully back into the club, yeah. and of course I met my old friend Mick Berzo. Berzo, yeah. And for the last, uh, oh, for the last years, it's all oh God, you know, the time was 2023 now. Yeah. Back in the early 90s, we used to go, I got to know him very well. And we'd go to on the bus to matches and everything for day outs. Yeah. 
And one thing, if somebody don't know much about when we went on a day out, yes. sometimes we'd be invited to dinner. Yeah. Himself and Whitey and myself. Yeah. And because I did discover that I had bears on one side and white on the other side. And the pair of them were as contrary about what they ate. <laughs> yeah. Bears used to leave a big plate of vegetables after him that'd be there. He'd eat the meat, all right, but he wouldn't eat the vegetables. I says, God, no, no one thing happened red right hair. And Whitey would be there. Why is he be there picking at his bit? Yeah. Says, What's that? She just said, "Won't like it." And I'd be there in the middle. This idea's anything. Yeah. So I went and ruined him there. Well, that was, that, that, that was the crack. That's good. Yeah. But really, what got get me to through in the job? I was in the Bruins Bar in Dominic Street, 20 years ago, yeah. nearly, and I was well on it, which is a thing that I'm not one of those, but I got well on it that night, yeah. and who were I in, but Berzo, and I can't know who, it might be some of the other lads that arrived in, and I said, I have to go home, and met him, so I got home, and I left, and I literally stumbled up the door, yeah. and went down on my two knees on the street, in Tommy Street. I could have gone out under the wheel of a car. Yeah. And he went, who came out? Who was out first? Person. Person. <laughs> Benson, come on, get fucking up out of there. Get up out of there. Now, he might have had a few. Yeah. He stands me up outside the room door, and next thing he had a taxi. Yeah. And he says to the taxi man, Take that gentleman home to Renmore, he says. He mightn't have any money, but I look after it. And yeah. that was what nailed hers when my head has been a real gentleman. A real gentleman, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I sent it on the card on the back of a photograph to his brother because it couldn't be at the funeral about the night. Yeah. He picked me up, and I'm sorry I wasn't there to pick you up. Yeah. Beautiful. In the store. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, that's very and that's my... Yeah, no, no. It it's might be all yeah. right, but that was my history with Berzo. No, no, it's still perfect. And exactly. a great, great you know? friend. And, and Berzo was like that. Yeah. 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 You know? It's very nice so, to meet you, you know? Very nice. Mm. Jerry. Jerry Ward. with the E. And uh, how do you know Mike uh, Berry? Many, many years ago. Where we're... Where I'm sitting here. And probably... Did you see that? There now. That's where we sit. On outside his house. Not me, but Petey, his dad, and my dad, Paddy Ward, Patrick Ward. And it's one thing we always regretted, never having that picture of the four of us that night. The two men, the two old men we brought down from a pub. But anyway, that same night, we went in and we had a few little scoops inside in Mike's house. And we drank and we sang of all times. But I can tell you, it went back further again than that. It was a great house to go to on Christmas Eve. And we come down for a few drinks and Mike would be stuffing the turkey and it would be all steel and the slice of ham or two where he'd have cooked here they rat. And he'd always say to me, Wardy, leave the ham alone. But we'd be all after coming down around 11 o'clock after the pub and we want to make our way up to the Augustinian church for midnight mass. Now, this is a great story because we collected Petey to bring it with us. And we all gathered outside the church and we made our way and it was packed up outside the Augustinian church. But halfway during the mess, Mike was leaning against Peter and I was leaning against him to keep him up. But the priest was saying, what a great job and what a great crowd were here. What a great job the crib was, all the cows, and everything in the crib, and all the little figments in the cribs. No, sorry, I beg your pardon, all the cops, all the things in the cribs. You might scrape that out. 
But then yeah, that there was a lot of around during we were all in the back of the church and yeah. But however, we were there and the priest was complimenting on the crib. And everything was in the crib. And up shouts, Peter, you forgot the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone started walking and laughing. <laughs> and the other fella, Mike said, shoot up. <laughs> so we had a great oh, night that yeah. night. But how will I know, Mike? As I said, and if anybody was at the mass, he introduced me to rugby and he introduced me to great times. And we had a great time in life. We were in Greece together. And that's another story, a long story, a long story. For another episode. And up an episode. <laughs> but that episode, he'd always love it. And that one episode was the day long we came out of our place to stay. And we were going up a nice, narrow fucking road. A hill. It was like butter to make there. But there was a donkey coming down. And different mate, when I passed out the donkey, I went up like that and the whole fucking echo went around the fucking place. And Mike and John Lenny were coming up and the donkey went hee ha hee ha down the fucking road and the fellow with a cut road razor came out. Who done that? I said them two going down the lane. And this <laughs> me a man went down after them. And he came up after me, Mike, about two hours later by the way. And I says, Mike. Sorry, if you ever told that to me again, he says, I kill you. That was our Mike. He was a one hell of a man. Love you, Mike. No. Thank All you right. very much, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. To staying in this with them in their house many years ago. Number one. Met Mike in London. Many, many memories. I stayed many friends with him. Down through the years, down through the years when I left the Navy in it, I used to always come to see his mother. His mother, Mrs. Berry, was like a mother to me. I will never forget those great days, great nights and mornings I had. And when Mike came home from London on one occasion, was one of my pleasure moments of meeting Mike in this house here. We went to the Sacre Coeur Hotel and we had a great evening. Saw Mike off a few days afterwards on the train and I met him in London afterwards. Met him many times afterwards in various matches. Saw him boxing, playing rugby. But I can tell you this much, he was the one true friend. Nice. Thank you very much. Hello, oh, Barry. I'm Ray, Mike's youngest brother. I was the youngest brother of the family. And um, just to say a few words. First of all, what I wanted to, if people don't realize it, this is Barry Clifford Jr., Barry Clifford, who was my first cousin, my first cousin once removed, the son of my first cousin. And I'm, I'm so grateful to him. I don't know if many have seen the, um, the video he did of. Uh, Mike's funeral and uh, the little procession down Middle Street and on the way down to Fort Hill and the month's mind and it was absolutely fantastic and I, I'm so grateful because I've got great solace out of it and I watch it every now and again play some of the music in it so Barry I'm very very grateful to you You're really welcome. the whole family we appreciate it big big time and anyone else that with Mike's funeral uh, just a few words I'm not going to go on because I, I did the little talk for Mike at the, the eulogy but um, uh, it's a while now since my couple of months, and I still miss him. I miss him greatly. Huge loss in my life. But uh, you know, getting on with it, as Bears himself would say, he's a get on with it, put one foot in front of the other, and you know, and so grateful to all the people. So I was, I was just saying, which I did say a little bit in the eulogy, uh, because Mike was so interesting. You know, when, when we're, we were in the. In, in the in the funeral parlor, you know, people had come up and I'd say to him, I said, I said, look, Mike, I said, wasn't he something else? I said, describe him to me. And most people say, indescribable. And that that's true. But the great thing is I didn't have to go individually thanking people one by one or any of this caper because anyone, all the people there and the people are looking at this, everyone had their own unique uh, relationship with Mike. He was that type, as I said, you're very, very 
he was unusual in that way. He was a very unusual man that way. Now, it's like all brothers, we had our moments, but it, it, none of that ever lasted because we were very different in a lot of ways, but we got on. Uh, you know, I had such love for him. And he was such a generous spirit and a very, very straight, very, very, very straight up and straight up guy. And, you know, so, it's, you know, we'll all miss him. You know, we're, you know I, as I said to you, I still miss him bit by bit but just a few words about I thought the funeral was absolutely fantastic and the send off we gave him and there's no doubt the town stopped for Mike Berry for Berza and the way everything went with, with like like clockwork and all oh, people were so good and so and I, and I love talking about him when when it happened Mike you know when he had that when that incident and the accident led to that and then the shock of you know Mike's death it was a tough tough time now really and then I just found it, you know, very hard to kind of break down talking about him. And then, but after the funeral and the month's mind, and uh, after that, I I love talking about him. You know, and I meet his friends up town, and I have the memorial card. Some of you would have got it. Beautiful Corinthian colours on the front of it, and the few words and, the, and the, the photograph of the of the the Galway hooker out the bay, which was taken by a friend of mine. It was an amazing photograph at the uh, the Salsas, You know the what was it? Oh yeah, the longest day of the year. And uh, so that was it. I have very little else. I don't want to say it too much no more because um, it's all been said really. It's a matter of no letting the dust settle and get nominated. And just part of the, the solace I have is that Mike was, was active. He was active up until the Thursday. He died on the Sunday. You know, now he, 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 he mightn't have been too great for, you know, the month or two before that, you know, he was in hospital and after the bit of the fall and that. But by Jay's he kept going, he was something else. Now, you know, I did say it again that he was made of granite. And, you know, Joseph Haley, the great Shannon singer, talks about there's that movie that was made, made of granite. And by Jay's and Mike Berry was. And uh, so just to thank you all again. And, and just an int a little aside, it was an old tradition. You know, I, you know, often people say that they thank people and they said, you're in our prayers. and. The, the, the mass will be offered for you, but I made sure I got that done because you know, Mike. You know, he, he that belief, my belief, belief or others' beliefs doesn't come into it. All that funeral and all that was done for Mike and his beliefs. So look at, we all loved him, and that's all I can say. And Barry, again, I want to thank you for all your help. You know, and God bless. And as I say, may your God go with you. No, they 
Oh. 